So now that we've talked about primitives, let's go ahead and talk about PolyMesh 3D objects. So let's go ahead and click our, we have our selected one here available to us. That's a gear we're working on. Let's go ahead and select that one. We'll go back to a cube 3D. And again, I have a polyframe turned on, so you can turn that on and off. And again, we're navigating. You can use the classic navigation, the right-click navigation. And if you want to orient yourself in space, you can turn on this floor option right here, and that's going to put on a floor in the Y direction. You're going to see uh, the shortcut for that is Shift-P. If you hold down Control, they give you more information. Uh, you're also going to have an X, a Y, and a Z axis that you can put these floors on. We're going to go ahead and keep uh, X and Z off for now. But the reason why Y is turned on is because Y is your ground plane. That's the plane that goes up and down in space. So essentially, if you go to the bottom of your object here, you're going to see a blue line is going this way. That's your Z direction. Your red line is your X direction. And then there's a green line that you can't see right now, but that's pointing straight up through our object. And it's represented green by this floor because the green arrow is the Y direction. Y is up and down. And again, if we turn on X, you're going to see that's a red block here. And now you can see on this side, we have Z going forward and then Y green going up. Now, if you're from another 3D program, where maybe Z is up or Y is forward. ZBrush is like Maya, where Y is up, Z is forward. So if you want to know the front of your object, this blue arrow, this blue line going this way, if we hold down Shift and Snap, this is the front of our object here. We can look at the bottom. There's the front of our object. And then the top of our object is the opposite of the bottom plane of the floor. So here's the top of our object. Let's go ahead and turn our floor off here. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we start sculpting on our objects here. So speaking of sculpting, we're talking about primitives and we're make this cube and we went down here to initialize and we have these initialize options and we are able to twist this and all sorts of cool stuff with our cube. But let's say we want to start sculpting on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag on it. And it's going to say, hey, to enable sculpting, you have to convert this to a PolyMesh 3D. So right now it's a primitive. We can initialize it to sculpt on it. Right up here at the top, we have tool, make PolyMesh 3D. So with any primitive selected, if you click on that, you're going to see, number one, it changes color. And that's because we have the poly frame on and we have line and fill turned on. If you turn fill off, that just makes it gray. If we turn the line off, it gets rid of the line. So by default, those are both on. We'll come up with some scenarios where we don't need both of those on. But for now, you can just toggle poly frame on and off. Or if you hover over this, you'll see the hotkey for that is Shift F. So now that we hit Make Poly Mesh 3D, and now if we touch our object if with our left mouse button or our tablet, we just kind of drag on it, you're going to see, oh, we can manipulate the object and it doesn't yell at me. This is no longer a primitive object, it's a PolyMesh 3D object. And that is the last of the hard, difficult things about ZBrush. If you got file handling, navigation, and the difference between a primitive and a tool, or a PolyMesh 3D object, you're good to go. You've caught up, you're, you've got 90% of ZBrush under your belt. So now just to kind of reiterate here, Let's go out of edit mode. So that drops it again, drops it onto our canvas here, hit control N. Let's do this all from scratch. Click the simple brush here. And again, that's gonna paint on our canvas, hit control N to clear it. Click on that. Let's grab another primitive here. Let's grab a sphere 3D, drag it out on your canvas, go into edit mode. So here's where you can go down here and initialize this thing here. I don't really want to initialize it. I just want to start sculpting. So I'm gonna hit this make poly mesh 3D button. And now I can drag on my object and it starts sculpting. If you don't want to see the wireframe while you're sculpting, just again, turn polyframe off. And now you can see as I drag on this, because we have the standard brush selected by default, it's actually sculpting on our object. So we no longer have a primitive object. We can't go down here to initialize anymore. Well, we can, it just gives us different options. So we can't change our H divides or V divides or anything like that. But what we can do is we can use this initialize to make a Q cube. We'll turn polyframe back on. So here's a Q cube and it's got a resolution of two, two and two and X, Y and Z direction. So you see it's subdivided once. Uh, we can make a Q sphere, Q grid, X cylinder, Y cylinder and Z cylinder. 